Hello and welcome to another episode of Modern Infrastructure Wednesday. I'm your host, Lee Zen, and today we're going to be talking about serverless GraphQL API. It's kind of a lot to unpack. What we're talking about is really how to build a GraphQL API uh, using a function in GCP. And you can see I'm wearing my new Super Plumy Puss t-shirt. Uh, so let's get started. Um, in this episode, we'll be covering basically a, a way to modify an existing example. It's, a, it's an Apollo server example. So Apollo is one of the GraphQL uh, API implementations. And then we'll learn about callbacks and callback factories. And really, so seeing how we can actually modify the example to, to work with callbacks in Pulumi. Uh, you can follow along on github.com slash Pulumi slash Pulumi TV. Uh, all the example code will be there, uh, as well as all the previous uh, episodes example code. And of course, if you enjoy this episode, please like and subscribe to the, the, the channel for future videos. Uh, we're publishing one every week. And yeah, please comment if you have any feedback. So let's take a look at what this looks like. Um, I already have a uh, uh, you know skeleton project set up uh, for GCP um, and uh, Pulumi uh, on TypeScript. And if I go uh, look at the uh, example I was talking about, this is in the Apollo GraphQL um, repo. Uh, I've already installed uh, the two dependencies they talk about. So now we're just going to uh, copy and paste the code they have around uh, implementing uh, the API handler uh, as a Google function. So um, this is really what the function should be in, in the Google function itself. Uh, but for now, we're just going to drop it into our Pulumi program and then, and then kind of add some things here to uh, get us to deploy. So here, this, uh, this handler is really what we want to deploy. Um, and so we can we can make an API. Uh, we'll, actually, we'll call it a, a function. So we'll call this uh, API function. And um, this is this is a uh, GCP uh, Cloud Functions uh, callback function. And so we'll call this API function. And this could really just be the uh, server .create handler here. Um, and the reason is you can see we, it takes a callback, which is exactly what this creates. Um, and that's pretty much all we would technically need. Um, in addition to that, we will want to actually create a uh, invoker so that we can actually uh, invoke a role rather, remember, so that we can actually invoke this from anywhere. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll call this the uh, API invoker. And this is a uh, Cloud Functions uh, member. Call this API invoker, and we can see here this takes a function, and so this will be the function above, and there's an underlying function, and there's the um, uh, ID, and then it also requires a member, and this will be all users, so we'll let anyone uh, invoke this, so even even just random internet users, and we'll give it a role, which is uh, you know the cloud functions uh, invoker role. And then finally, we'll export the, the URL uh, of the function that we're uh, creating. Cool. So let's try running uh, Plumi up and see what happens. This should actually fail. Um, and the reason for that is because, uh, and you'll see quickly, when we try to serialize the function, uh, it doesn't really work because we try to capture this uh, Apollo server class uh, that we instantiate up here this object. And, you know, we really don't like kind of the this and stuff like that. And, and um, part of that is because we're kind of crossing this boundary between, you know, instantiating this here, and then trying to use it um, as a full fledged thing uh, in our function. So we could uh, fix this up. And let's do that uh, by wrapping this. So we'll call this a callback. And we'll make a callback up here. And actually, let's clean this up and make this uh, look more TypeScripty here. So we'll call it. We'll do import um, from. Let's do that, and uh, we'll we'll have this thing. We'll have this uh, function callback. And uh, callback actually. Let's let's look at the the type signature for this. Um, actually, looks like this. So it's an express request response to avoid. So let's just copy this here. And we'll use that signature uh, in our callback. And we'll just indent all this. Uh, 
and earlier we had server dot uh, create handler. Oops. And this is our callback function, right? And so we can just just invoke this with the uh, request response. And so we we basically oh, we need to import express of course. So let's try this. So what we've done is we've wrapped all that code we had previously into the callback itself, uh, and we're just calling the callback uh, as if you know uh, that's what we're doing. So let's say yes. And so instead of just uh, passing off the the function itself, like we were instead of just passing this, we're also doing all of this other work uh, that we were doing before in our in our uh, in our Pulumi program, and now doing it as part of the callback itself. So let me fix the indentation here while that's running. And while this is running, actually, let's also take a quick look at the, the example here. Um, you can see what this is really doing is it's very simple. We're just, uh, you know, creating a simple uh, schema where we have a single query type with a parameter hello. Um, and uh, these queries just return hello world. So we're not doing anything complicated. Obviously, if you want to get into this, you can go uh, learn more about GraphQL, or if you're already a GraphQL uh, user or knowledge knowledgeable GraphQL, you, you can pretty easily modify the example we're doing to uh, to work with your needs. So this is still deploying. You can see the function created, the IM member created, so everything worked. Um, and let's try to execute it. So uh, we can curl uh, Pulumi. Oops, let's wait to curl post. And so we'll take the stack output of the URL. And uh, we probably need to give it a content type uh, application JSON, and we'll give it some data, and it'll be you know query, and uh, we'll give it the query of um, hello. So let's try that. And so now this is actually executing the function, and we get back the result we expect. So life is good. You can see it was kind of a little bit slow, and that's some of the startup time. But also some of that's because you know every time we invoke the function, actually, it's going to run all this code. So this is all part of our callback. Um, it's going to instantiate a new Apollo server and do all this stuff, and then finally invoke the callback. So how can we avoid all this startup overhead? Well, that's where uh, callback factories come in. So let's take a quick look at uh, the Cloud Functions documentation. Um, for Pulumi, and you can see we have this concept of a callback factory. It's a signature that actually produces an entry point, but it allows us to initialize expensive state. So the whole point is that this factory lets us create a callback. So let's do that. Um, so how do we do that? So let's modify our uh, example here. And so instead of just giving it the callback, we can actually give it a callback factory. So we'll give this a factory, which we haven't declared yet. Let's go back up here and let's change this to be a factory. And as we'll call, oops, the signature for a factory is actually fairly simple. It's just it's a it's a it's a it's a function that takes no parameters, and it returns a callback. So we can actually instead of doing this, we can just return this. And uh, so now we're not wrapping the whole thing. So now what's going to happen is all of this code, all of this is going to act as initialization code, and then this callback is actually the the handler that will be called on each function invocation, but the, the remaining stuff uh, up here is only called uh, one time when the function is first created. So let's update this, and we should see this still work. So we can see it's going to replace the function with the, the bucket object is the, is the source code, um, and then also replace the, since we, we've changed some of the other stuff here, so let's do this. And you can see the URL. We don't know what it's going to be now since we're going to have a new uh, a new uh, invoke invocation URL. So let's run this. It's like a couple minutes uh, for us to update. So just a quick recap of what we changed. Uh, before we were just invoking the whole thing as its own callback, and now this factory function is basically just it's just returning the callback instead, uh, and all this stuff becomes initialization code. Actually, if, if you were to go into the console and look at how it's, it's set up, you, you would actually see that, that happening. Uh, there, there's the initialization followed by uh, using the, the handler as, as just this, um, as opposed to the entire handler being all of this code. 
Um, so that would be the difference. Okay, great, so our update is done. And you can see we, we updated and replaced the object. And now let's go back to run our curl command. And we should see that this will return the same thing, but uh, without having to do all of that uh, startup cost. So that's that's it. Actually, just those are the two things I wanted to, to run through today. Um, hope you had a good uh, time following along. Uh, as always, please like and subscribe. Please leave any comments uh, in the video below. And we'll see you next week.